Hey everybody, welcome to another episode on the AI Guide where we focus on the human impact of AI. So today is great, I think we have the final dagger in the argument that autonomous driving isn't coming soon. <laughs> this is classic. This is an article written by ID TechX. Hats off to them again. This is a comprehensive survey of high performance computing for automotive. And I think once we get through this, you're going to clearly see that autonomous driving is absolutely going to be here full autonomy. We're talking level five. Computers on wheels. That's how people currently see cars. Practically everything that happens in a vehicle is being monitored or activated by a microprocessor. But the surface has only just been scratched in terms of how much computing power is making its way into vehicles. And then the next section is called Rise of Autonomous Level 3 Vehicles, which is not full self-driving, right? And robo-taxis, which is. The age of autonomous transportation is dawning and with it will bring a new era of computational requirements for the automotive industry. We're going to see why right now. Automated cars require expansive suites of sensors to scan the environment and provide the car with the data it requires to emulate human driving. Leading SAE level four robo taxis have up to 40 individual sensors. That's stunning. And these are a mix of optical, radar, and LIDAR, not necessarily all three, but 40 sensors on a vehicle. However, sensors alone are next to useless without high performance computing processing their data and constructing a 3D rendering of the environment to inform the vehicle's program driving policy. High performance computing, HPC, takes the real time data outputs from the array of sensors and performs several important processes. Two key challenges it faces are sensor fusion and object classification. And there is some disagreement as to the order in which these are done, meaning sensor fusion first or object classification first. Whether late fusion or early fusion is used, the HPC will still have lots of data processing to do in the form of image processing and running AI algorithms for image classification and driving policy. The key components that handle these tasks are graphics processors, GPUs, which we've talked a bunch about, computational processors, CPUs, which have been around for decades, and RAM, similarly decades. Typically, these are three discrete components However, the specific requirements of HPC for autonomous cars have led to them being combined onto single chips called SOCs or system on chips. So this is a new advancement in computing, right? And it's not that old system on a chip. The ideal SOC can take in data from all the vehicle's autonomous driving sensors, process it, identify and classify all detected objects, and create a set of steering, throttle, and brake actuations according to the driving policy. So the SOC is responsible for the entire autonomous driving system. Putting all these features on a single chip is key to meeting the computational requirements of autonomous driving. Why? With next to zero physical separation, each part of the chip can exchange data with near zero latency next to no noise and huge bandwidth. That's critical in high performance computing. GPUs are a key part of the puzzle. Their image processing abilities combined with their suitability to run AI algorithms through deep learning and neural networks make them a cornerstone of a SOC. This is why we see NVIDIA gaining traction in the autonomous vehicle space. Its Xavier and Orin platforms have been staples in autonomous vehicle computational processing. Mobileye, which we talked about here also, already on the streets of New York. Mobileye is another that has pioneered this industry. Founded in 1999, it made a fast impression and name for itself, attracting the interest of Intel and leading to its acquisition by Intel. 
It is now public again and has found its way into many consumer vehicles powering ADAS applications. Mobileye and NVIDIA have been increasing their computation power recently, progressing from a few tops tera operations per second, which alone is amazing, to tens of tops, now hundreds of tops, and targeting thousands of tops. They've been chasing these improvements through smaller node technologies from their supporting foundries. So this idea of node is critical, and we're going to dive into that here. It's a bit technical, but we'll boil it down at the end. In recent years, ID Tech X has seen Mobileye, NVIDIA, and others move from 28 nanometer in 2018 to 7 nanometer FinFET solutions and lower in 2021. So in just three years, they decreased the size of a node by a factor of four. That's huge and very quick. That is exponential, my friends. However, the foundries are now producing sub-5 nanometer technologies and heading towards sub-1 nanometer technologies in the future. Now check this out. This is mind-blowing. ID Tech X has seen that each time the node technology halves, the computation power increases by a factor of 10. That's 10x the power each time the node size halves. So that means that between 2018 and 2021, computational power increased 10x times 10x. Stunning. But chasing smaller and smaller node sizes will get more and more expensive. For example, a 300 nanometer wafer of TSMC's three nanometer technology costs in the region of $20,000. So that's one chip. And if the chip costs 20 grand, then the car is going to cost, you know, 80, 100 grand, certainly just because of the chip cost. This technology is also now being incorporated into phones, laptops, and PCs. We talked about that on the last video. Check that out. As such, automotive HPC developers need to think about how they can optimize existing technologies to get the most performance. One approach that ID Tech X is seeing is an increased focus on AI, neural networks, and deep learning accelerators. These use new data AI enhanced data processing strategies, reducing the reliance on classical approaches found on the GPU. So basically, they're changing part of computation from hardware driven to software driven to speed things up because it's getting more and more expensive to make that hardware. This can boost the performance of a chip very cheaply. ID Tech X is seeing AI become more common in sock block diagrams from leading tier twos like Mobileye and Renesis. So a tier two is a subcomponent supplier to a tier one supplier that directly supplies car companies. But one particularly interesting prospect is Recogni. Recogni is a startup that has developed an AI accelerator for autonomous driving SOC applications that promises game-changing computational power and efficiencies. So what does this tell us? This tells us that this whole process is accelerating, which again is the definition of exponential. Moore's law says that computational power should double every two years, a decades-old empirical formula that is held strong until recently. Some are saying that Moore's law is beginning to sow as the industry faces increasingly difficult technological challenges to achieve smaller and smaller incremental gains. So going from three to one nanometer scale is extremely difficult, and going sub one nanometer scale isn't even being attempted yet. However, none of this includes quantum work that's being done. A prominent solution to deal with the slowdown of Moore's Law and the substantial increase in the manufacturing cost of monolithic integrated circuits is the concept of chiplets. So ICs, integrated circuits, are the historical driver of computing. So chiplets deconstruct a monolithic IC into distinct functional blocks, transforming these blocks into separate chiplets and subsequently reassembling them at the packaging level. So it's funny, they're sort of going back to where they started. They're breaking apart 
these single chips that did everything in the specific processes and then bridging those process chips back together. It's called packaging. The ultimate goal of a chiplet-based processor is to maintain or enhance performance while reducing the overall production expense. These solutions are collectively referred to as advanced semiconductor packaging. They facilitate the convergence of multiple chiplets often produced at different process nodes onto a single substrate. So they mean by different process nodes, different size of technology ranging from seven nanometer down to three. Let's take the server CPU sector as an example. While most contemporary server CPUs are built around system on chip designs, notable developments have emerged. In 2021, Intel announced its forthcoming server CPU, Sapphire Rapids, which will adopt a novel approach. This next-gen CPU will be constructed as a four-chip module interconnected by Intel's embedded multi-die interconnect bridge. So that is a packaging solution. Concurrently, AMD has embraced the power of 3D advanced semiconductor packaging techniques to enhance server CPU performance. In the case of its latest server CPU, Milan X, released in March of 2022, AMD employs a 3D packaging strategy that involves stacking a cache die directly atop the processor. This innovation results in a remarkable greater than 200x interconnect density boost. NVIDIA, a key player, has been utilizing TSMC's 2.5D packaging technology known as chip on a wafer substrate for its high-end GPU accelerator since 2016. All of this points to a widening utilization of advanced semiconductor packaging technologies across the automotive industry. These innovative packaging technologies are poised to play a pivotal role in enhancing performance, integration, and efficiency. The automotive sector will emulate a trajectory akin to that of the cloud and high-performance computing market. This trajectory involves the integration of diverse intellectual property and silicon elements at the package level. That means they're going to put together technology from a bunch of different companies into one solution. With increasing demand for high-performance computing and vehicles and a necessity for continual performance growth, there will be a rapid evolution in the technology that goes into automotive computers. Now this is very cool at, to sum this whole thing up. The technologies coming down the line will make an average car today look like a landline technology in a world of smartphones. So what does all that mean? Well, it means that autonomous driving is 100% going to happen because the computing power necessary to make it work is rapidly, rapidly advancing. You already know, my viewers know, that SAE Level 4 cars have been already approved for use in Germany and the UK and probably soon in the United States and China based on computing advances principally right now through the cloud, right? But eventually residing locally on an autonomous vehicle. And level four means that you still have to pay some attention, but you can take your eyes off the road, not continuously, but, you know, for brief periods of time, whereas level five is full autonomy. You never have to pay any attention to what the car is doing. So what's the human impact of all this? A transportation revolution is well underway. I've been saying that for three years now, based on a bunch of stuff, cloud computing, computing power, sensor development. The, the sensors keep getting better and better and better year over year, more powerful, better definition. And so this is totally happening. With SAE Level 4 starting, to be allowed on public highways, and regulation plays a very important part in this. Watch one of the videos from last week about that as a key enabler to fully autonomous vehicles globally coming very soon. This global regulation architecture is being put in place. So what does this mean for us people? It means 
a bunch of things, good and bad. The good is that in urban areas, transportation will become faster and faster with actually fewer taxis on the road because shared taxis as a service will become increasingly common. So getting around is easier. This is particularly important for elderly people who don't drive anymore, obviously, which is why many elderly people do live in cities because they can get around and still do stuff. But it also means that if you're in a career like driving a vehicle to make your living, start planning now. You want to transition your career by 2025. So you've got two good years to learn something new and stop being a driver because between 2025 and 2030, autonomous vehicles at level five will start rolling out and the need to drive trucks, taxis, etc., will start rapidly disappearing. And keep in mind what I've said when I've talked about Mobileye previously and about regulation previously. City centers are gonna become private passenger car exclusion zones. You will not be able to drive your private car into the congested centers of big cities. New York will be first, then San Francisco, LA is a little different, but this thing is gonna sweep the globe. London has already started down this path. So, thanks so much for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and share these videos. I really, really appreciate your support. Your referrals will mean a lot. So thanks so much, take care, have a great week, bye.